So today I want to share with you guys my top five considerations or rules, you could call them, as I'm shopping, specifically with thrifting as a minimalist. I've been thrifting my whole life. I'm obsessed with it. I still am. I just buy a lot less. I have a lot more thought and intention behind every purchase. For me, I prefer to shop secondhand because number one, it's just cheaper <laughs> straight up. That's the biggest reason. Number two, it's much more sustainable to wear something that already exists on the planet. And then number three, for me, it's a much more creative process. It's just so delightful seeing all these cool old items. And I love having something that no one else has. So that's me. <laughs> that's my story with thrift. Let's get into these five considerations. Hopefully they can help you out as we head into the holidays. It's a crazy frenzy. I'm hoping to keep myself grounded and help keep you guys grounded as well. My first consideration, it's super straight up. It's super simple. It's that if it's not on my list as I'm entering the store, I'm not buying. I typically keep a running list, sometimes in my notes app, but honestly, it's just up here in my head. I don't really buy things like day of. When I think of them anymore, I wait a few days, weeks, months, years, depending on the item, how big the purchase is. And I'm just not in a rush. So if I'm really excited about something I see at the store, let's say it's a suede jacket with fringe. I'm in love, it's a great price. If I haven't been wanting it for a while, it's not on my list. Typically what I'll do is I'll just add it to my list instead of buying it. And then if I still want it in the future, that's when I'll pull the trigger, but I'm very rarely finding something like on the spot in person and buying it and taking it home. And this has just been through trial and error with myself. I hardly ever want anything after like a day or two, especially after a few weeks or a few months, you just burn out and like move on with your life and you realize you never really needed it in the first place. The second rule I have for myself is never settle, which sounds so dramatic, but never settle on the price, never settle on the condition. For me, the value of a vintage item totally depends on the value for myself, if that makes sense. So I don't always look up the value of something on eBay and try to find its historical reference. For me, if I really like, for instance, this little cowboy painting, I got this at a vintage fair last year. So typically for price points, I'll pick a number in my head before I look, kind of like a little game with myself or before I ask someone. And then once I hear the price, if it's over, I just, I say no, I already know my boundary with it. And previously I used to not want to know the price and then I find out the price and then I would kind of come up with reasons, rationale in my mind to pull the trigger on it. Another example is this wool blanket. I really wanted an original vintage Pendleton blanket in the Glacier National Park colors. This is just, I don't know if it's a knockoff or where this color scheme came from originally, but this is not a Pendleton. And you know what, the Pendletons are like 200, 300. And for me, an itchy wool blanket for that amount just to have something cool and beautiful in my home it's just not my budget, frankly. So I told myself anything under $100, and this one I think was 50 or 75. I wanna say I shopped for like a year and a half until I found this blanket, so that's also when the running list comes back into play. And then a huge one for this is clothing items. I feel like so many of us settle on <laughs> weird sizes, weird shapes, weird fabrics, especially when I would thrift clothes when I was younger at the Goodwill trying to find like really cool vintage. I would buy something with a small hole or a small stain thinking I would repair them and recover them. But the fact of the matter is I hardly ever get to it. For me, it's like if I can do this in 48 hours and I know I will and I already have the supplies, then I'll get it. But even with those conditions, I'll pretty much always just leave the piece at the thrift store. My next thrifting consideration, I feel like this one comes with time and comes with age as you get to know yourself, but it's asking yourself, does this piece, does this item fit into my life? Does it fit the aesthetic of my home? Does this piece really fit into your closet or is it going to just stand out like a sore thumb and not really mix and match with any other pieces? Again, it's so easy to get caught up with the price tag. If there's this cool sweater that's $5, sweaters are kind of my kryptonite personally. I would bring them home so often in the past. And then you just have this gathered collection hodgepodge. For me, this is kind of when I go back to, to Pinterest in my mind, at least for my home. Whatever project I'm working on, whatever I'm thrifting for, I really like to refer back to the vision. There are so many times in any given week that I am out thrifting, secondhand shopping, that I have to bring myself back down to earth and have this come to Jesus moment that this piece was not meant for me. And one thing I like to think about in my mind that helps me, I guess, cope with or come to terms with just leaving this cool item in the thrift store is that 
it's meant for someone else. Like it's not meant for me. And if everybody else took all the treasures from the thrift stores before me, I would never find anything good. And so same thing, it's a little bit of karma. If you're leaving something cool for someone else, it's just a magic little treat discovery for them in the future. So that always gives me a really sweet peace of mind. Okay, this next consideration or piece of advice that I have for you and that I give to myself all the time is to enter into your thrifting world, your thrifting sphere with the right conditions. Set yourself up for success. Eat some breakfast, drink your coffee, make sure you're like well rested, well fed, and also like check in with your mood, how you're feeling that day. Are you going through a stressful time? Are you stress shopping? Are you going to impulse buy because you're not in a great place? Do you feel a little low, like low self-esteem right now for one reason or another, and you're using shopping as a coping mechanism? This has been a huge kind of realization for myself beyond thrifting, just like online shopping for clothes, things like that. Asking myself, why? Why am I doing this right now? Is it to like fill another void? So those are kind of bigger existential questions while thrifting, while shopping. But for me, if I can check in with myself, be in a good headspace, be relaxed, also the time of day you go to the thrift store and the vibe in the store, that can really set the tone for me. I don't like shopping with friends really or with my son, I like to be alone. I don't like it to be busy, so I'll only go certain times. And I also love like vibing out to my music. So if I don't like the music or it's really loud, I'll bring my AirPods and plug in and listen to my favorite songs or a podcast that way just so that when I'm making my decisions, when I'm finding things, it's just extra fun, extra creative and inspired. And when I actually pull the trigger on something, I know it's from like a good grounded place and not just because I forgot to eat breakfast. And this last shopping consideration I'll share with you, it's definitely the biggest one and this just applies to life across the board, is to trust your gut. That is the whole thing. Trust your gut, go with your gut and ask yourself kind of those hard questions. They don't even have to be specific. It's just like, do I need this? Is this right for me? And there'll be some little part of your brain that is telling you yes or no. You know, it may be the fabric. It may be the fit. Maybe your brain knows that you should hold out for something better because it's not really what you're looking for, but you're trying to fit it into this box. But I feel like the gut kind of like summarizes that whole feeling without having to be totally cognizant of all those little questions and details, if that makes sense. So for me, I love to put things in my cart as I shop. Maybe it's a little bit of the competitive <laughs> shopper in me. So I'll typically keep a cart or a basket and put things in. And it's super similar to shopping online. I'm sure some of you have found this or all of you. Once you actually add the things to cart, when you go to check out, sometimes you're just like already over it. Like the thrill of putting it in your cart was the thrill and you're kind of just past it. So I love to check in with myself, have a hard reality check right before I go to check out. I find that almost <laughs> all of them. I'll just like send back back into the store for someone else and just check out with what I feel really, really good about. And I wanted to close out with one little footnote or like caveat I thought I'd mention is that I'm not perfect at all. I make impulse buys all the dang time. I just bought this really ugly laundry sign for my laundry room. My husband saw it in the car and was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> It was 50 cents. You know what I mean? They still get me sometimes. I figured if it doesn't work, I can donate it. And that's true. Sometimes I'll bring things home, experiment, especially with like home furnishings and design and then par with it, redonate it back into the circle of thrift store life. But don't be so hard on yourself. That's all I'm saying. When you feel like you made a mistake, you made an impulse buy, it's not the end of the world. I love in Marie Kondo's book, The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up. She says that every piece of clothing, every item in our life teaches us something about ourselves, and also we're ever changing that's the other huge part like my style in my home and my wardrobe is way different than it was a few years ago so sometimes you just grow out of things well i hope you guys enjoyed this video i was so looking forward to recording it because i feel like this is like my internal dialogue with myself when i'm alone at the thrift store all the time and i wanted to share with you guys please let me know in the comments what are other considerations or things you think through when you're out shopping it can be secondhand shopping or just shopping for new things as well that keep you grounded, give you that reality check and kind of help you make sure you're bringing things home with thoughtfulness and intention and just finding the right thing to express yourself. I guess that's what stuff is, right? Function and then fun as well. All right, I'll catch you guys in my next video. I love you so, so much. Have the most fun rest of your day. Bye.